An extraordinary house is taking shape on the shores of an ancient and mysterious volcanic crater lake in western Victoria. The building pays homage to the skills of ancient craftsmen, so faithfully in fact that scarcely a nail has been used in its construction. The massive timber frame cut from roadside logs that were destined to become wood chips is held together by wooden pegs. That the house is in harmony with the environment is hardly surprising as its owner is a world-renowned musical instrument maker whose life dovetails neatly with wood. Many of us dream of living in a magnificent house in an idyllic setting. I've got the workshop built here already and that's just a, it's a wonderful environment to work in here on the lake. And the house is going to complement that, nestle beside it. When Steve Gilchrist conceived the idea of his ideal residence, its builder had to meet some very strict and specific criteria. Well, you have to be a little bit crazy and to put your hand up to do design and want to do this to begin and then find somebody who plays fiddle. <laughs> Luckily, his good friend Nick Deer filled those requirements perfectly. And so, over almost two years, a rather extraordinary house has arisen on an allotment overlooking spectacular Lake Narpet, a mysterious volcanic crater lake near Camperdown in southwest Victoria. On most days, sweet music wafts over the building site. It's hardly surprising, because Nick Deer and his son Lockie are amongst Australia's best-known bluegrass musicians. And amongst ardent fans of the mandolin, the name Steve Gilchrist is revered. He's one of the best mandolin makers in the world and he's a good friend of ours and we um, play a lot of fiddle tunes and mandolin with him and love of timber as well, you know, because he's just very passionate about timber as well. So I think he just wants to be uh, ensconced in it. Well, I've always been interested in timber, trees and timber. I grew up sort of living in trees almost on a river and always made instruments. That's all I do for a living, all I've ever done. The music, it was made the main inspiration, I suppose, for the instrument making, which took me to America a lot. And when I was over there, I was always fascinated in the old buildings, the old timber buildings and the old barns. And this is the same traditional construction that um, old buildings have been done for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. It seemed to me I've always wanted to live in and work in a, in a building like that. Remarkably, there is scarcely one nail in this most authentic of old-style houses. There's no uh, normal fixings at all. Everything's held together with these timber pegs, which my uh, wife made, Janet. And, um, Thank you, Janet. <laughs> it's not actually the tightness of the mortise. It's the pressure exerted on it by the peg. The builders, likewise, have been true to tradition. There has been barely the growl of a power tool. Why go with that particular style? Well, that's what we keep asking, but it's a, a traditional thing, I suppose, and uh, when you see the 8x8s uh, eight eight and all the, these huge pieces of timber come together, it's, it's quite an amazing sensation. More than a building, it's a piece of art, I suppose. For Steve Gilchrist, it's a case of life mirroring art. The qualities of timber are, are just amazing and they're not always fully known or understood engineering wise. Um, the tenacity of timber and the qualities of timber as it ages and matures. An instrument maker has known that for, for hundreds and hundreds of years and to have the instrument as a house, as a, as a living thing is also really inspiring for me because the frame will be completely visible inside the house. All the pegs, all, all the draw pegs that hold all the, the more than 10 joints together. Everything will be sort of visible and clad from the outside. So 
the quality of, of timber will be be in the living space all the time, which is always in my workspace as well. I've always been interested in this style of building. I grew up in Somerset where a lot of it all started, I suppose, and 